From the mountaintops of Uncharted 4 to the dilapidated underground of The Division, 2016 has been absolutely outstanding. Many indie developer budgets are now sizable enough to make you forget all about the label altogether, and that's alongside more reputable studios putting out games that don't require the financing of a small island to complete. All of these factors can contribute to games that feel as though nowhere near enough people are playing them as they deserve, hence the label of underrated being applied to everything from the overlooked to the straight up wrongly scored by the mainstream press. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 14 most criminally underrated video games of 2016 so far. Number 14, Hitman. Every month it's the same story for Hitman. I'll just wait for the full release, is the top comment that comes on social media, only to be followed by swaths of fans doing their damnedest to convince the masses the game is fantastic right now. Alas, I'm one of the latter. Hitman's episodic schedule is the perfect way to experience the game, and why? Because the levels are absolutely huge. The thing that none of us predicted when IO Interactive first announced this plan was that each month would come with its own set of unique kills. By releasing a large map and then plugging in elusive targets for players to hunt down and eliminate after main missions are done, it gives the game a unique, dynamic feeling of challenge and community never seen before. Overall, it adds an entirely new and refreshing dynamic to how we approach a Hitman experience. Number 13, Superhot. Genuine innovation hasn't been seen in the first-person shooter genre since Call of Duty reinvented perk-based multiplayer options, but with Superhot comes the idea that time only moves when you do, a concept that makes it shine brighter than any other FPS I've played in years. During gameplay, time is slow to recrawl. However, nudging the stick slightly forward will lurch it back into motion, with a full push speeding things up to real time. Once you get the hang of this momentum, you'll be dodging and weaving around bullets and punching foes' heads clean off in one giant blur of pure wish fulfillment. At the close of each level, Superhot plays back your progress in real time, so you always get an idea of what the hapless foe on the other side of your rifle was facing as you tore them in half. The fact that this game was initially put together as a glorified tech demo for a short convention is what will really blow you away. At number 12, Fury. Fury is hands down the most infuriating and downright challenging game on PS4 by quite some amount. What developers the game bakers have designed here hits the ground running and simply asks that you keep up. Your moveset is comprised of a split second parry, a quick dodge, some attack combos and a charge modifier for the latter. By combining all of the above, you have an immediately tactile roster of abilities, which is one that you'll need to genuinely master if you want to stand a chance. Projectiles often pepper the screen in your standard top-down view, but the camera jumps to a more up-close fighting game style setup once you get your various opponents down to half health. Fury has proven to be one of the most surprisingly awesome games of the year so far, and one that if you like your games tough as nails and ultimately rewarding, must be part of your collection. Number 11, Oxenfree. A game about the sorts of furtive interactions we all have with one another as teenagers, Oxenfree takes the teen horror ideal and spruces it up with some fantastic supernatural abilities. Gameplay serves to indulge itself in brilliantly written exchanges between your various heroes visiting a spooky island, as you'll spend far more time wandering from place to place than getting through any puzzles or gameplay sections, but that's precisely why it works so well. As the forces at play involve unique time travel mechanics, any conversation that's already concluded will be reimagined with different mindsets and moods, meaning you can unpack every facet of someone's personality based on an entire gamut of responses. Number 10, Fire Emblem Fates. Thankfully for old school Final Fantasy fans, turn-based battling has made something of a return in 2016. Fire Emblem Fates may be the latest entry in the franchise's long line of releases, but it comes with an incredibly enjoyable story and one hell of a difficulty curve. Playing as a memory-wiped prince or princess, you're torn between two warring factions that both insist you're their rightful heir. The game actually handles this with permadeath on higher difficulties, meaning allegiances forged and friends met along the way can be lost forever if a battle goes sour. It's absolutely lovable once you get the hang of how to plan and coordinate your attacks, leaving you to bounce to and fro between awesome story sequences and intense battles for hours. Number 9, The Banner Saga 2. Try Game of Thrones meets 90s Disney, the result being The Banner Saga, an eventual trilogy of titles which just received its second instalment. Fighting against the collapse of a world ravaged by the force known only as the Dredge, the bleak and impressively apocalyptic tone challenges you to manage food levels as you travel across the increasingly barren wasteland. Combat happens frequently against the Dredge, with party members also dying permanently in between battles. Artist Igor Archimenko has outdone himself yet again, as even before the game gets its hooks in, such an outstanding aesthetic knockout is one for the ages. The best looking game of 2016? Next to Uncharted 4 and Overwatch? Hell yes. Number 8, A Boy in His Blob. Now you may have caught a boy in his blob on Wii U back in 2009, but a re-release on PS4 and Xbox One this year has opened up an entire new generation to its wondrous charms. Playing as the boy after he finds the titular blob, he promptly befriends it by feeding it a load of jelly beans, and it's this idea that transfers into gameplay. As a standard 2D puzzle platformer with an almost Studio Ghibli-esque art design, feeding blob different beans makes him morph into everything from a parachute to a trampoline to a massive weapons-grade mech. But what will really get you is just how freaking cute it all is. Remember the first time you saw Kirby's Epic Yarn or Yoshi's Woolly World? Think of that feeling and know that Boy in His Blob features a button just for hugging. Words are not enough. Number 7, This War of Mine, The Little Ones. From one of the most delightful games you'll ever set eyes on to one of the most harrowing you've ever seen. Inspired by the Siege of Sarajevo between 1992 and 96, developers 11-bit studios have woven an incredibly personal tale about the aftermath of any war zone. The Little Ones takes the 2014 original of this war of mine and adds the imperative to look after the youngsters. However, their innocent demeanor and mannerisms contrast heavily with the whole how far will you go to survive nature seen everywhere else. 
Guns will be fired to intimidate others and claim their food resources. Your own bombed out house will most likely be raided and one of your teammates killed in the process. Balancing this with giving your children as close to a normal life as possible with toys and radio music is absolutely heartbreaking. Number six, Unravel. Cutesy platformers are a dime a dozen these days, which is why Unravel plays things very safe. Coming across as a little big planet goes outside type deal, it wears its heart on soft cotton sleeves. Playing as Yanni, you'll leap and swing through a number of photorealistic environments, occasionally ensnaring the local wildlife to reach greater heights, or perhaps get tugged along on a piece of debris or a wayward fish. The world feels very well thought out and supremely detailed. It's a labor of love from a tiny developer given the bigger budget lease of life thanks to EA on publishing duties. Unravel's carefree charms make it the epitome of an underrated gem. Number 5, XCOM 2. The granddaddy of turn-based combat. You can bet your bottom dollar XCOM 2 will see a huge uptick in popularity once the console releases come around in September. Gameplay is more of the same tactical turn-taking that you may already know and love. Your custom team of alien thwarting warriors can now be specced in more directions than ever, factoring in bio-augmented limbs, reassembled alien tech, and a crafting component that keeps armor and weapons fresh for every handful of missions. XCOM's base formula is pretty flawless already, but Fire Axes have added many small tweaks, such as the ability to sneak up on your foes with a well-timed ambush and greater terrain deformation. XCOM 2 deserves its place as the premier turn-based strategy game of choice. Number 4, The Technomancer. Although it took a bit of a battering in the mainstream press, there are a lot of really awesome ideas at the heart of the Technomancer. A cyberpunk-tinged tale of rebellion on Mars set against the backdrop of the sandy red dunes and mutated monsters all baying for your blood. Combat is ostensibly The Witcher 3, except you've got three stances to swap between on the fly. By changing these up and getting comfortable with the constant need to alternate your approach, there's a surprising amount of depth when it comes to tackling groups of enemies, because make no mistake, the Technomancer is very hard. Downsides include heavy rain-esque amateur voice acting and cutscene animation reminiscent of the original Mass Effect, but for its formidable RPG chops, the Technomancer excels more than it stumbles. Number 3, The Witness. The Witness is hands down the best pure puzzle game in years, especially on consoles. Braid's Jonathan Blow once again proves he and Studio Thekla are operating on another level entirely, crafting the simple premise of piloting a line across a grid only for several brain-breaking modifiers to factor in. Figuring out precisely what the different symbols you come across actually mean is part of the fun, but it also forms the basis of why the game is so outstanding. By the time you're done, you'll have learned an entire language of puzzle pieces and symbols. It's conceptual and existential as hell if you start seeking out the audio diaries that litter the island you're walking around on, but as a base puzzle game, The Witness still beats everything else on the market. Number 2, Firewatch. Critically, Firewatch is an absolute darling, but ask your average gamer and chances are it'll be derisively labelled as nothing more than a walking simulator. And that's a crying shame, because what Camposanto have crafted here is a tale of isolation, and above all, how we deal with life's inevitable hardships. By placing you in the shoes of Henry, a character who's taken off to the Wyoming wilderness after a harrowing life event, it's then how you control him and converse with the overly friendly Delilah that frames a variety of interactions and ultimately the ending of the game. And although retreating to nature can result in some beautiful sunsets and metaphorical mental exhales, those problems so easily fled from will always come back around regardless. At number one, Monster Hunter Generations. For years now, Monster Hunter has been regarded as one of those franchises that just can't quite catch on in the West. However, unlike the Yakuza series in Dragon Quest, Generations is the most accessible the series has ever been. Basic gameplay revolves around living the fantasy life of a titular Monster Hunter, darting between various villages, felling increasingly large beasts, and wearing the best parts of their carcasses for your next battle. There is a story in as much as boss creatures do pop up at regular intervals, but for the most part you'll be crafting new weapons, posseing up with fellow hunters around the world, and above all, challenging yourself to see what massive beasts you can bring down. So that's our list. Are there any that we missed? Let us know in the comments what the most criminally overlooked video games of 2016 really are. You can find us on Facebook here. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon.